What is going on Jet fans? I am Matt O'Leary back with another video. In today's video, I want to get into Robert Sala's comments to the NFL ne Network? No, NFL.com. NFL.com, uh, Robert Sala spoke on the Jets offseason, Aaron Rodgers' recovery, and 2024 expectations. Now, good news, Robert Sala is set to speak with the media tomorrow morning, so we will have a video on that at some point on Monday. Day, but these comments I thought were worth sharing. So I wanted to go through what Robert Sala had to say and just how that impacts the Jets going forward. The first comment focuses on the Jets' young players and how the Jets brought in some veterans to help set the standard. Here's the quote. All the young guys that were forced to play a year ago were really excited about the direction they're going, Salah said, but at the same time to bring in some veteran presence, to bring in some leadership, to bring in guys who know how to play the game, who have played the game at a very high level and who have... Uh, and who really have the capability of achieving and matching the standard which we're trying to create. Now, that's an important distinction, right? The, the standard, that is something that we hear a lot. And someone said that there was no standard. Michael Hardman, who is still a free agent, by the way, the Super Bowl hero is still unsigned after three weeks. Uh, of NFL free agency, but moral of the story, uh, the New York Jets are trying to set a standard on the offensive side of the football. They've done it for a very, very long time on defense. To Sala, Ulbricht's credit, the defensive side of the football, they have done a good job of setting a standard and keeping that standard. The biggest criticism from last year is that after Aaron Rodgers went down, it felt like they went, oh, you know, like we we tried, we will put a bow on this thing, put a pin in it, and we'll try try again in 2024. This whole 2023 uh, season went down the tubes. And granted, like, of course, your ceiling is not nearly as high once you lose a quarterback like that, but... It was a very frustrating 2023 season that in, at times mimicked the 2022 season when the Jets were having no offense but elite play from their defense and still losing football games. And I think it's important for the Jets to set some sort of standard. And obviously Aaron Rodgers coming back is going to be the biggest factor in all of that because you're hoping that he is going to be the one who's essentially calling the plays as Nathaniel Hackett is going to give formations. Aaron Rodgers goes to the line of scrimmage. Aaron Rodgers calls the plays. That is a significantly better way of doing things than having Nathaniel Hackett call in place to Zach Wilson. That's about it. That, that's how you end up with a historically bad offense, actually. In particular, Robert Sala mentioned the offensive line, which was horrendous last year but he goes you look at a guy like Morgan Moses who played on a torn pack last year just an old school soul in the sense that he just shows up to work works his tail off and a guy who's going to pull people with him Tyron Smith has played at a very high level for a very long time and John Simpson at guard I mean he's like the definition of strain the way he works and kind of his story he's kept battling to prove he belongs in the league excited about the mental makeup of the room obviously we've got some really good football players but we've also really added them uh, added to the mental makeup of that room that's another area of importance that I think is worth calling out from Robert Sala and something that you know, I'm going to give the team a lot of credit for right now they are changing the identity of their offensive line I think far too often in years gone by the Jets offensive line really got pushed around one because they weren't all that great but also because they just didn't have a certain toughness like I keep going back to uh, a game against the New England Patriots in Zach Wilson's rookie year where he got absolutely smoked multiple times uh, and then ends up getting knocked out of the game and misses a few weeks. And the Jets offensive line kind of just let it happen and nobody stood up for him as he's laying out on the field. Uh, just a very weird kind of situation between the offensive line and the young quarterback, and that is totally going to change. Morgan Moses plays with that physicality. Tyron Smith is someone who's just like so well respected around the league. And while John Simpson, I was like lukewarm, maybe at best I, on that signing. If he's your fifth offensive line, fifth best offensive lineman on your starting offensive line, which is how it's probably projected to be right now. You could live with that. That's essentially what the Ravens had last year, and they were a very, very good offensive line. But something that I really like with John Simpson is, one, the more he talks, I think he has a great personality, and he seems like someone who uh, is a good teammate. And I, I don't know. I just like how he presents himself and how he holds himself. But when you look at him uh, at the tape and just how he plays the game, 
he gives 110% every single time. Now, that's not to say that he's mistake-free because he's not, unfortunately. Sometimes, you know, he gets a little ahead of his skis there, and that's when the penalties come in, and he gets a little over-aggressive. But I like that he's kind of like a bull in a china shop where he's just going going nuts every single snap. And more often than not, it ends up pretty good. Of course, Robert Sala was asked about Aaron Rodgers, and he had to say, Aaron, he's on a, miss, a mission. He's doing his rehab. He's out in California, I believe. Obviously, he's taking some time for himself. He was ready to go last year, man, so I know he's getting ready. We speak to him often. I don't want to speak for him, but I am going to speak for him and say that he's really excited about attacking this season. That is something that seems like a given. I know that there were some VP rumors, and that was kind of all just that what they were rumors. But moral of the story, uh, Aaron Rodgers seemed like last year he was ready to go on the proof people wrong tour, and he was upset with how things ended in Green Bay and how some people covered him during his time in the final few years in Green Bay. And now, and on top of that, a season ending injury four plays into your tenure as a New York Jet. If you don't think he's going to come back motivated to prove people wrong, I, I just don't know what to, what to tell you. I hope it works out. Um, that's not me saying like, I'm guaranteeing it's going to work out. They're going to go out and win 15 games next year. I think that's uh, a, a little too optimistic. But even if he comes out and plays like a top 12 quarterback in the NFL, the Jets are going to be in a really good spot because of their defense and special teams unit. So uh, I am also excited to see him on the football field for a full season. The last quote is one that really does not surprise me at all. He says, I'm excited to attack this season and try to accomplish the things we were supposed to accomplish a year ago. That speaks to everything that I've been talking about since September 12th when you know, Aaron Rodgers goes down the day before and it, it felt like both Joe Douglas and Robert Sala through the remainder of the 2023 season were operating like they were getting a pass, which was frustrating. I, I'm not saying that, you know, either guy deserved to be fired. That's that's not where I am. But I just don't like that the mindset seemed to shift to how does this happen? And it was like all these plans. They put all our eggs in the Aaron Rodgers basket and he goes and look, I'm not saying that. You know, after Aaron Rodgers goes down, you have to have a you know a twelve win season and win multiple playoff games. But you know, you see a team like Cincinnati, they lose uh, they lose their quarterback, uh, and they go out there and they fight hard every week and they surprise some people. And you know, the Cleveland Browns are a good example. They lose their quarterback, they start a million different quarterbacks, and they you know sneak themselves into a playoffs game. Um, you know, there, there's just there's examples of of teams unfortunately losing their quarterbacks and you know just fighting a little bit harder I, I thought the Jets mailed it in at, at some points last year and that's really what bothered me but again that kind of just speaks to what we all kind of knew I think that the regime both uh, the GM and the head coach got a pass for 2023 but now's the time to win and I think Sala and Douglas understand that like there's no more excuses. I don't care how many injuries there are to the offensive line. I don't care who gets hurt on either side of the football. Figure out a way to end the longest active playoff drought in all of sports when Robert Sala is entering his fourth season as Jets head coach and Joe Douglas is entering his sixth season as the general manager. There are some things that I like about both of these guys. I think you can make a case, especially more people lean on Joe Douglas and support him than Robert Sala. But moral of the story it's time for both these guys, and I think they understand that. But let me know what you think on the quotes down below in the comments. I'm Matt O'Leary. Subscribe if you're new. Give it a like before you go, and I'll catch you next time.